Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 624. Don't stop your medical treatment when you start feeling better. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about a subject that is uh, not research and not a new idea, but really an old idea um, that goes along with my medical training. Uh, the other day I was, uh, I had a patient come in who hadn't seen me in two years. And that's kind of unusual because when you have hormone pellets or testosterone or estrogen or both, um, women come back every four months, three times a year. So I hadn't seen her in all this time. And I had wondered where, what she was doing and why she stopped taking the pellets. So I asked her that when she came in. And her answer was very familiar to me. Well, I just started feeling better. And I'd felt better for years because, or two years, because I'd been seeing you for two years. And so I stopped because I felt better. And she said, and then all the old symptoms came crashing back and I was miserable again, but it took me a while to like get my energy together to get back in to see you. This happens all the time. And it's not really good for you to replace your hormones, get rid of all the symptoms that you came in with, and then feel better because you're on the hormones every four months, and then think that maybe your ovaries regenerated, or for men, your testicles have started making more testosterone again. They just don't do that. When ovaries go to sleep, or we could, call it, we could say die, they make very little of any kind of hormone. And when men need testosterone as they get older, and we're talking about aging people, aging men and aging women, then their, testo their testosterone level is not going to all of a sudden go up after they've been on testosterone. Testosterone shuts down men's sim uh, systems to make testosterone, and then we give, we give them that, and we give them a higher level than they were making themselves, but when they come off the testosterone, they go back to where they were before, or even a little bit lower because they're older. So in terms of hormones, which is the most common thing that I deal with um, for patients who don't continue uh, their treatment, it, is, it, it doesn't make you feel good, and you're not going to stay feeling good after the pellets have worn off. So after four to six months for women, after six to uh, 12 months for men, you're going to go back to where you were when you first came in. And usually there are many symptoms associated with your problem or I wouldn't have started you on testosterone uh, or for women, testosterone and estrogen. So feeling better is not a good reason <laughs> to stop your hormones. Now, hormones are a little different than other medications. Other medications you take every day, say ADD medicine, if you've ever taken ADD medicine or antidepressants, in general, you take it every day. It's a 24-hour cycle. It goes up during the day, and it wears off by the next day, and then you have to take it again. Well, when you take pills like that, they are, they are designed to take every day or whatever, or three times a day, depending on what your doctor uh, tells you. But if you stop taking them, you immediately get your symptoms back. So there's no waiting. Because pellets are time-released, you kind of are under the impression that you don't really need to get them back and their symptoms come back slowly, you don't notice it as much. With ADD medicine, if you don't take your ADD medicine and you have ADD, you aren't going to be able to function very well that day and you'll know and remember that you didn't take it. So that's, that's the comparison in terms of getting a subdermal pellet lasts a long time so the symptoms come back slowly. Taking a pill is a very short-acting thing and your symptoms come right back. So there's 
the normal human uh, tendency to say, oh, I'm better, I'm gonna just stop. <laughs> uh, doesn't really happen with pills as much that give you symptom relief. Now, if you're taking blood pressure medicine, generally you don't know, you don't feel anything from that, but it is protecting you from stroke and heart attack. So in that way, a lot of people stop those medications when they, they are not feeling a difference by taking them. That's not a reason to stop. You're protecting yourself from something bad happening. And if you have high blood pressure, unless you lose a lot of weight or get into massive exercise, that's not going to change a lot uh, over time. In fact, it probably will get worse and not better. So you should stay on your blood pressure medicine. That's oftentimes how people have strokes. They just I didn't feel like taking my blood pressure medicine. It didn't seem like it was doing anything for me. And then, boom. So that's, that's my advice on different kinds of medicine. Um, I consider blood pressure medicine uh, medicine for the heart, heart conditions, um, hormone therapy as lifetime, as lifetime commitments. You're going to have to take those the rest of your life for different reasons. Uh, thyroid also. Um, is one of the medications that your thyroid, I had a conversation with someone yesterday, and he kept saying, well, isn't my thyroid just going to come back? I mean, it, doesn't it just like go to sleep and come back? And, and that, in general, we only see that in people who have thyroid disease associated with a pregnancy. Oftentimes, people have low thyroids after they deliver, and then we have to treat them with thyroid medication for a year, and they then come back, but those are young women, and those are women who had a particular problem that's over, pregnancy. So that, those are the only people that generally can stop their thyroid medication. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's, talk, let's talk about supplements. One of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this um, whole problem of people just stopping their treatment was because I was at dinner with a good friend. Uh, actually, a couple that's a good friend. And the, the guy who's, who is our lifelong friend actually lets me take care of him. And he, um, we're sitting at dinner, and he sat there, and he had had a knee operation six weeks before. And so he was walking. He was pretty doing pretty well. He should have felt really good. And uh, his pellets were up to date. And he sat across from me, and he goes, you know, I just don't feel good. I don't feel like eating. I think I need to go home. I just don't feel well. So, of course, I'm at dinner, so I'm acting as a friend. He's not in my office. I'm not, I shouldn't, doctors shouldn't, like, invade your privacy if you don't want your privacy invaded at that time. And we are sitting in a social circumstance. So I just said, well, why do you think this is? I mean, what's different? Is it because of the pain that you have? No, the pain's better. I'm not taking pain medicine anymore. And... Um, I, I just kept looking at him, and he looked deflated, but he didn't look like he was going to have a heart attack. He didn't look at short of breath. He was, didn't have any of the emergency things that I usually look for when someone says, oh, I just don't feel good, and I don't know what's wrong. He definitely wasn't sick, like virally sick. Um, and he, he said, I think this has been getting worse over the last couple of weeks. So... I, I said, look, I'm going to look at your chart when I get home and see if I can put this together, because sometimes I actually have to think about something before I get the answer. So I looked at his chart, and I looked over everything, and um, I called him and said, well, what are you doing different? Are, you know, your pellets are not due yet. You're, uh, how are you doing on your supplements? And he goes, he says, you know, I stopped taking my supplements four weeks before my surgery, and this is six weeks after the surgery, and I haven't started them up again. And I just kind of giggled because, you know, supplements are thought of as, um, as not medicine, but in many ways we use supplements as medicine and to um, improve our diet, our nutrition, when Americans don't get a good diet or good nutrition. When I go to Europe, I always feel great because, of course, we're vacationing, and but we're eating really whole foods, uh, fresh from the farm kind of foods, uh, and they just eat differently than we do. They don't have big grocery stores. They have little shops, so, and people shop every day. Not that I want to do that, and I couldn't fit that in my schedule, but um, 
I, I said, you know, I have you on several supplements that are really important for your health because you're taking these medicines. And you're still taking those medicines, right? Because some supplements we use to take the place of nutrients that a medication uses up. For example, if you take um, a statin drug for your cholesterol, it uses up something called CoQ10, which is a, uh, an enzyme. And it's a vital enzyme. You have to have it. And uh, it's within your liver. So over time, as you take a statin, you use that up and you need to have it replaced. So I had put him on CoQ10. Uh, if you're on metformin for diabetes or for weight loss or for prediabetes, then you need to be taking B12 because B12 is used up by that medication. And there's many other examples, but those aren't optional. If you take the medicine, you have to take the supplement or you're going to have other side effects. So that's, and you may not know what the side effects are. You may not have been prepped on that. Doctors don't have that much time anymore. I'm not talking about myself, but generally doctors in, in normal, pr in practice that isn't specialized like mine don't have the time to give you every detail of everything they do. Um, it, they just don't have the time for that. So um, in this case, after my friend started his um, supplements back about two weeks later. He says, you know, I think I'm feeling a lot better now. <laughs> and it really did make a difference, but supplements are a little bit like, like pellets. It takes them a little while to get out of your system and make you feel the loss of those supplements. Now, let me say a word about supplements. Biobalance Health has specific supplements that we use and re recommend for our patients. We choose our supplements very carefully, and we make sure that they are uh, physician-grade, um, medical-grade supplements. That means what they say on the outside of the bottle, you're getting, and the dose you're, that they say on the outside of the bottle, you're getting. And it is because of that, it is better than just finding something on Amazon at the cheapest price, because you don't know what you're getting. It could be fine, but you don't know if you're really getting enough CoQ10. You don't know if you're really getting the dose of um, vitamin Bs that they say on the bottle, unless it's medical grade. So we find these to be safer. Now, we don't ever tell our patients that they have to buy ours, but ours are an example of what they should be looking for to, to uh, treat themselves. Supplements are also used instead of drugs sometimes, um, I use something called endodrine, which is a uh, combination of some vitamins plus animal adrenal, and it lowers the, um, the corticotropin uh, stimulating hormone from the pituitary so that people don't get anxiety, feel anxiety um, with being confronted with difficult circumstances. So a lot of anxiety patients take that, and it helps also helps people with high cortisols decrease their cortisol level back down to normal. And we use that as a medication instead of a medication because the only treatment for high cortisol is cortisol. It's some kind of steroid. And in general, people, it's not safe or healthy to be on a steroid for a long period of time. This is actually very mild and doesn't have the same side effects as a drug. Um, supplements also, let me, let me just tell you the bad news. All of our nutrition in our diet is not the same nutrition as we had in the 60s. The nutrition in, in fresh fruits and vegetables has all decreased over time because we don't have the same nutrients in our soil that we had then. We didn't replace them well. And we don't have all the minerals and the vitamins and, and all of the things that a plant needs to be a healthy form um, of food for us. So, in general, people need to take some kind of supplement, vitamins, um, multivitamin at the very least. And so we're doing it to supplement a diet that is probably not as nutritious as it used to be. Now, if you're a perfect eater, which I don't really have never met one, um, no junk food, always cooks their own food, always doesn't overcook food, always eats it close to raw, eats lots of vegetables, salads every day, I mean, avoids junk food. I mean, 
that's kind of a perfect diet. You may not need a lot of vitamins. You may not leave, need a lot of supplements, but you're going to need like probiotics because we're so clean that we don't have the right bacteria in our gut anymore. And so we have to replace the bacteria in our gut with probiotics. So that helps us, that helps us not have gut problems, not have gas, not have bloating. It helps us uh, absorb the nutrients from our food and it keeps us from getting um, intestinal diseases. So um, that's, that basically is one of the things I often tell people I would like them to take, especially if they're on weight loss, they're losing weight or on our weight loss program because the studies show that if you don't have the right gut bacteria, you're not going to lose weight. If you don't have the right gut bacteria, that's where your uh, feel-good hormones are. That's where they're made and sent to your brain. That's your dopamine. That's your serotonin. Uh, that's your norepinephrine, all made in your gut by bacteria. So it's a very symbiotic relationship. So you've got to have the right bacteria. The studies of um, uh, people who have obesity surgery show that when they have their, before their surgery, they have like three or four strains of bacteria. You need to have millions of strains of different kinds of bacteria to keep you healthy. And then they have the surgery, and for some reason, they have many more strains of bacteria and they lose weight. A year after the surgery, they start losing the good bacteria. So they literally have to take probiotics to stay healthy and to stay at a lower weight so that all of this isn't reversed. If you drink alcohol, alcohol uses up all your B12. So all of the side effects of alcohol uh, use, especially if, it's, if you overuse alcohol, um, B B12 uh, deficiency causes you not to be able to think, causes all kinds of neurologic problems, numbness in the feet, shuffling. I mean, basically over time, you lose a lot of your uh, neurologic function because alcohol is a toxin. <laughs> I drink wine. I drink a drink periodically. But honestly, after I heard it was a toxin from my COO, Joe Ballman, who informed me of that, then it did look so tasty to me. So I have um, decreased my alcohol consumption. Uh, another thing that we often suggest in terms of supplements is vitamin D. Vitamin D, if you live in the United States, uh, anywhere above Florida, you're probably not getting enough vitamin D in your life, especially if you work indoors. So vitamin D is absorbed through the skin, that's true. But the darker you get, if you're somebody who tans darkly, then darker skin doesn't absorb very much. My husband has very dark skin and he has to take a lot of vitamin D because he's so dark, he's not absorbing it from the sun. It's, it, it's a, it was a protective device built into us so that we didn't get too much vitamin D by being out in the sun all the time. But vitamin D is key to keeping your brain healthy, not getting dementia, not getting cancer, not, I mean, not getting infections. It's, it's a pro, one of the primary hormones that you need to have. And in general, the darker skin you have, the more vitamin D you need. So that's, um, that's another reason to take it. But taking vitamin D, you're not going to notice that you feel bad if you don't take it. But you will notice it down the line when you have problems with your health. Um, let's see. What else did I want to tell you? Um, so the next thing, I it, very interestingly, I had written this quite, uh, quite a while ago, but yesterday I had somebody who... Um, was on thyroid medication and he just stopped taking it because he thought, oh, I'm gonna take it a while like antibiotics and my thyroid's gonna come back and I'll be fine. But he felt terrible. And when we checked his thyroid, it completely wasn't working. And I said, are you, I mean, your, your lab tests look like you're not even taking your thyroid. And he said, oh yeah, I'm not taking it. Okay, well, you're tired, your hair's falling out, you feel cold all the time. All of the things that you told me when you came in that you were complaining about are because you're not taking your thyroid. And then I had to explain to him that your thyroid gland doesn't regenerate and just come back to normal in general. There are exceptions. But um, his did not come back to normal. And he was under the impression that it was just like any other kind of periodic kind of medication you take to, to, to feel better. It's a lifetime thing. If your thyroid has... 
uh, stopped working enough to take thyroid medication, then you're going to have to take thyroid medication every day. And you'll notice it if you don't take it. He was a little oblivious. He's one of, he was, he's one of the people that doesn't like tie his symptoms to anything he's done. So I have to do that for him. So he understands now he's not going to stop taking his thyroid again. So why do we, um, medical studies always tell us that vitamins aren't necessary, but in general, that's because, I don't know why they do this, they make the dose too low, they, you know, they don't uh, have people take it long enough, they don't have the right parameters to decide if it helps or not. Basically, they don't want you to take supplements. Why that is, I don't know, because oftentimes it'll save you taking many different vitamins. So, I mean, excuse me, many different drugs. So, you have to uh, basically um, take more drugs if you're not taking the supplements. But their studies always look like medication doesn't work. And I always compare it to what I see. If the supplements I give my patients are making them better, like in my, my friend's case, then I know they work. I don't need it. I don't need it. Uh, uh, medical study to tell me that they don't work. So um, that's, that's just part of being a doctor. You kind of have to observe and see, and see what your patients are doing in response to certain treatments. Some doctors look at, you know, just in their mind, they have a, they have a, um, a list of things that you should take if you've got this problem, and they do that. But they, they don't look at what happens to you afterwards. I can't do medicine that way. I have to see, I have to connect what we gave you and how we change things with how you feel and what your symptoms did. It's very important to do that. Not everybody is built like a problem solver like I am, but, um, but I, I watch this and if people go off their hormones, their medications that are necessary for life and health, if they go off their supplements, um, Honestly, I can see, I can hear the difference from their complaints, and that makes me know, without a government study, that you need supplements to stay healthy. Most people do. Now, what supplements you need, there's an article in um, Consumer Reports, uh, January 2023, that tells you about supplements in a, a, not a negative way. It tells you what they do in general. It doesn't give you everything they do, and it has a list of supplements that don't really do anything and advises you not to take them. And I agree with that article. There's more to be written there, but um, as a briefing, it's a, it's a good article about uh, supplements. And uh, I would advise, I mean, it's easily read because it's not for doctors, it's for patients. So just remember, when you're on a medication, you have to ask how long you're taking it, what is it for? And if your doctor says, well, you're going to be on this the rest of your life, then don't stop it. And if you're on hormone replacement, ovaries aren't growing back, testicles aren't getting healthier as you age, you just need to replace what they are doing for you. You need to replace with, with the hormones that you're missing. Same with other medications and, the, and supplements that you need to stay healthy. So wrapping this up, it basically is use your head. Think about why you're taking something. Ask your doctor if it is something that you can stop next time you see them. Uh, it's not an emergency. You don't have to call them for that, but, but go over that with them. Have that in your little, on your phone, you can do notes. Just write down questions as you think about them and then ask the, your doctor at your next visit. So I hope this helped. I hope this helped resolve some probably arguments be, between husband and wives about stopping medication or hormones. And I hope this makes you healthier in the future. I'm looking forward to seeing a very healthy population uh, in the near future. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.